Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing to take a look at the next week's slate. Heading to the Big Ten as Indiana heads on the road to play Michigan. And for Michigan fans, the last two, week, two weeks, just master class performances. You talk about winning a national championship, having national championship caliber performances. That's exactly what you've seen from Michigan the last two weeks. And they're going to have a nice opportunity to kind of build off that momentum against an Indiana team that is really struggling on both sides of the football. Not really much of an identity in this program right now. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Tom Allen is not returning to Indiana next season if nothing really turns around for the Hoosiers. Excited to get into this one. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys and especially the Michigan fans. You guys know how much I love talking about this Michigan program. The support from you guys truly does mean a lot. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, love to hear from you guys in the comment section. And without further ado, let's get into this. And I want to start with this Indiana offense going up against the Michigan defense that you talk about Michigan being dominant. They've been dominant on the defensive side of the ball, only allowing 6.7 points per game through the first couple of games. I mean, teams are averaging less than a touchdown against this Michigan defense. And you look at Indiana at 15 points per game. That's 123rd in the country, 4.3 yards per play. Nothing really seems to work. You see it on the numbers. Then you turn on the game. You watch a little bit of the film. They don't really have much of an identity outside of giving the ball to Jalen Lucas. I'm sure Indiana fans, even Michigan fans, remember Jalen Lucas last year. I mean, this was a game that we went to halftime in Bloomington, 10-10 with Indiana. Michigan rolls in the second half, but because it was close, I mean, Jalen Lucas was the guy providing those explosive plays. You got to think if Michigan can kind of keep Jalen Lucas in check, like this Indiana offense is really going to struggle moving the football on a consistent basis against the Michigan defense that has been so dominant. And the reason I think it's so dominant has been up front. We talked about heading into the year. Why is Michigan a, a true national title contender? Not only do they have talent all over the football field, they also have the depth, especially along the lines of scrimmages on the defensive line. The, the rotation that you've seen up front, it's been a master class. And you take a look at the four edge rushers that kind of rotate for Michigan on a regular basis. Derek Moore, Jalen Harrell, Josiah Stewart, they're both, they're all three of them averaging over 20% pass rush win rate. Braden McGregor just behind them at 17%. If you're in the double digits in pass rush win rate, that's a pretty good number. Michigan has four edge rushers who are over 15%, two or three of those guys who are over 20%. Uh, the, the pressure on the quarterback has been where this Michigan defense, I think, really does excel. And then you take a look at the back end. Our biggest question mark was, who's going to be the opposite cornerback uh, from Will Johnson? Uh, Josh Wallace has played phenomenal football. He's been targeted 11 times, only given up four catches for 40 yards. Will Johnson, they're not even throwing at Will Johnson. He's only faced five targets, only given up two catches. Want to know the the what I've been most pleased with is the emergence of Keon Sapp, and it gives Michigan a little bit more flexibility with their personnel in the back end. And you go back and watch that Minnesota game; they bumped out Mikey Sandstrell to a boundary cornerback position, kicked down Makari Page into that nickel, and again played Rod Moore and Keon Sapp in the back end. A little concerned about the depth that we had in the secondary. I think the emergence of Keon Sab has been really kind of relieving some of those concerns in terms of the depth. Then you take a look at the linebacker play. A guy that I was maybe a little critical on in the offseason in terms of how much snaps is he going to get is Mikey Bear, one of my favorite players on Michigan. Just wasn't sure how much he was going to play with Ernest Hausman coming in. Mikey Bear has been phenomenal. His average depth of, tack uh, depth of tackle, 1.8 yards. I mean, this is a dude that's living at and behind the line of scrimmage. You take a look at some other numbers. Braden McGregor bent a force against the run. His average depth of tackle at, at the line of scrimmage, 0.7 yards downfield. Uh, Derek Moore, 0.8 yards downfield. This is a defensive line in front seven that lives in the backfield, does not give running backs pretty much any room to breathe in, and they went at the point of attack. And so you look, all three levels of this Michigan defense absolutely humming, and it all culminates into giving up less than a touchdown per game against opposing offenses. Now, looking at this Michigan offense going up against the Indiana defense, the Indiana defense has not been great, especially against the run. And this could be not that we haven't had a coming out party for this Michigan rushing attack. This really could be it, right? Nebraska, really solid against the run. We were able to run the ball. Minnesota, pretty solid in the front seven. We're able to run the football. Indiana, not so good in the front seven. They're allowing 5.5 yards 
per carry to opposing running backs. I have a feeling this Michigan rushing attack is going to really have a field day. Now, Indiana does have a guy that is really good off the edge, and I'm more interested to see our tackles go up against probably the best pass rusher that we've seen yet. Andre Carter, the transfer from Western Michigan, Ladarius Henderson, seeming to come in and kind of lock down that tackle spot. Really excited to see what our tackles, Barnhart, Henderson, Miles Hinton plays, can do against Andre Carter, who might be one of the best pass rushers that we see all season. It'll be a nice test for us to see where our tackles are at. And then continuing to see this explosive passing attack kind of work off the run game. And we said, what is kind of the recipe for Michigan when they're playing their best football? They're running the football at a high level. They're forcing teams to kind of load the box to stop this run. And then we're going play action and, and kind of hitting that vertical passing attack. That's what you've seen, especially when Michigan's offense is humming. That is what you've been seeing. We're obviously running the football really well. We're averaging almost 40 points per game. That's top 10 in the country, 6.9 yards per play. That's also top 10 in the country. You want to talk about the defense being dominant. Michigan offense has been just as good, but what you're most excited about is the explosiveness that you've seen through the passing attack. 9.9 yards per pass. I mean, that is another top 15 mark in the country. So the thing that we've been wanting for Michigan, kind of that if Michigan's going to win a national championship, what do we need to see happen? One of those was being able to hit the explosive play through the air. You've seen that, and you've seen it in a lot of different ways, right? Play action, work in the middle of the field to guys like Cornelius Johnson, Roman Wilson, Colson Loveland. But you've also seen Michigan do a really nice job scheming their guys open with some shorter routes but giving them space to work after the catch. There's two ways you can hit through the explosive passing game. One is just through air yards, right? Pushing the ball down the field 20 plus yards. You also can kind of design route concepts that give your wide receivers the ability to catch the ball earlier in the route tree and get after it after the catch. You see Michigan do it both ways. You're finally seeing that juice from Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson, we knew, is one of the fastest players on the field every time he steps on between the lines. He hasn't really stayed healthy, and he hasn't really been consistent up until this year. And now he's been a dog. Cornelius Johnson, Roman Wilson, Colson Loveland at the tight end position. That's a really good recipe, and I want to give a special shout-out, just kind of looking at some PFF numbers as a Michigan fan before I went to sleep last night. A.J. Barner, our best run blocker graded out on the team. And that's kind of something that we talk about a lot, but doesn't necessarily get highlighted enough is that our offensive line is awesome, but really what makes our run game kind of the next level special is our wide receivers and tight ends also really do a nice job kind of facilitating blocking in the run game. A.J. Barner hasn't necessarily been unleashed as a pass catcher yet. I think he can do that, but he's been a hammer in the run game, kind of like Luke Schoonmaker was last year. It's kind of nice because Colson Loveland, he can block, but he's a guy that you want running routes. A.J. Barner been kind of that second tight end who's been a hammer in the blocking game. That's, again, what makes Michigan so special. Getting to the pick here, I mean, you guys know I don't rock with 35-point spreads, especially when, when Michigan's playing. That being said, for this one, it really does feel like just how many points does Jim want to hang with Michigan State coming up next. I, if you wanted to take Michigan to, Michigan to cover the 34 points, wouldn't fight you on that because even when, if we're up 28 points in the third quarter and we got to bring in our twos, I quite frankly think our twos are better than Indiana's ones. So I think they could probably outscore Indiana in the fourth quarter as well. If I had to take it, I I probably would just take Indiana in their points total under. Just because I don't think Indiana is going to score much on this Michigan offense. But I think either way you put it, whatever number you want to take, I think Michigan wins this one handily. I'm looking for the things we just mentioned in terms of, does this team continue to look like a national championship caliber team? Jim Harbaugh takes care of business. Michigan State up next weekend. Excited for it. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas again. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you.